Hi, I'm Kyle Jameson, uh, class of 2008, and I'm here doing an interview with the Headmasters Heritage Committee. Oh, nice to meet you. Harry. Nice to meet you. And we'll take you home. Good. Here you were at the junior head of Mason. Junior was 7th form when I was 3rd form. Lucky was a year below junior. Yeah. So, you yeah, I have a really close pass with him. Today we're here with Carl Jameson, class of 08, uh, for an interview to talk about his life at Grammar uh, and his cricketing career, both with playing for the nation, for the IPL, and his plans for the future. So, Carl, how are you doing today? Good, thank you. Um, today uh, we'll talk about generally your memories from and your highlights from your time at Auckland Grammar. So we'll start with just a uh, general, why did you choose Auckland Grammar? Yeah, it was just, I suppose it's such a uh, school with such a, such a big um, history and so much tradition around it. Obviously um, growing up in Auckland you sort of know of the, um, you know of the big schools and I grew up sort of South Auckland so um, it was always I guess a bit further removed from yeah. um, from where I grew up, but is always you know I guess trying to be a part of um, something that's you know a little bit bigger than yourself and um, you know to challenge yourself and um, coming to the boarding house and that sort of thing was always you know it was something that was able to uh, yeah, I guess sort of challenge me and um, help move me forward in my life I guess yeah and following that how did you enjoy boarding at Sibs? Do you have any fond memories as your from your time as a boarder? Uh, any lifelong memories? Yeah, it was interesting. I guess my, my first probably two or three years, I struggled a little bit, um, just getting used to being away from home, I guess, on a consistent basis. Um, but my last two years, I just absolutely loved it. Um, it was, I guess, probably that social side of things and get a little bit more freedom as you sort of yeah. got, old, um, got older and, yeah, got some lifelong friends, um, you know, so it's been good to um, catch up with them, I guess, over the last last 10 years or so since I've been um, out of the school and, um, yeah, I guess... Uh, reflect that time, some of the things we went through, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you have a favourite memory from your time at Auckland Grammar during the school? Uh, I don't know, it kind of, to be fair, just blends all into one a little bit, but yeah, um, yeah I mean, obviously, the, all the time you play sport, um, I guess that camaraderie, it was, you know, first 15 games, um, being yeah. part of the hostel, being able to go to um, go to the Grammar Kings games, do the haka, that was um, always pretty special and something else that always held pretty dear um, to me. And something even now, like watching, being able to watch on TV from afar, and um, you know, so that's something probably that I value, I guess, from my time, especially being in the, um, you know, being in the boarding house and being part of Grammar. Yeah, and you were quite the athlete, both in the Premier Basketball and First Eleven Cricket. So, how did Grammar support you through sport during your tenure? Yeah, it was, um, it was, a, it was a, 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 yeah, I guess a tough juggling act at the time, trying to juggle um, a couple of Premier sports and basketball, kind of, or both basketball and cricket, kind of crossed over at times yeah. Um, but yeah it's obviously a little bit easier when it's sort of split into summer and winter sports in terms of um, being able to sort of focus your time in on that but yeah obviously the school supports you you know a lot with your facilities and coaching yeah. and that sort of stuff and gives you um, you know the means to basically um, you know put as much as you want to try and achieve what you can in the sport so um, yeah it was always it's always pretty cool being a part of those um, Yes, your top side. Yeah, and uh, going back to your childhood, what is your first memory of playing cricket? Uh, my first memory of playing cricket, well, being part of cricket was uh, my old man used to play for uh, Papato Cricket, so I used to go down there and um, I was about, must have been three or four and stuff, and used to go down and watch his game with mum and um, get a sort of pint of hot chips and a, and a drink of, of some best. sort and just basically yeah, play all day or, or play all afternoon, so that was kind of uh, my memories. Uh, of cricket going to the sheds after the game and probably seeing a few things that uh, those young eyes didn't need to see but um, <laughs> yeah it was, it was sort of um, yeah I guess my first first memory of the game yeah and uh, following that what was it like stepping onto the field for the first time representing New Zealand for that first game yeah it's a pretty pretty surreal experience I remember I think for me the first time I called up to go across to Aussie um, for that Boxing Day test and just being a yeah. part of that um, part of that sort of whole event was just crazy. I think New Zealand had been to a boxing test for about 30 years at that point and, um, you know, so many Kiwis had flown over for it and although I didn't play across that series just to be a part of the group for the first time and, um, yeah, it was something pretty special and then to actually play, it's, it's hard to put them, you know, like into words. I think, you know, for me, I kind of term it as though it's something you've been chasing for so long, I think, so long. you know, for... Achieve it. 
probably 20 years I've been going after this this thing of playing for New Zealand and it's um, you actually know what it's like really like you see it and you watch it on TV and you speak yeah. to guys and you kind of have your own idea of it but um, being in that position is just so different and um, so much more special than what probably what I would have would have thought you know I sort of always held it in high regard but it was even it was even better than I could have imagined and yeah. um, you know I was lucky to come into a pretty uh, pretty successful group so um, I sort of you know was able to um, just learn off those guys and sort of just fall into my role pretty easily and yeah it was just a yeah just a um, special special moment yeah and following that you stepped into the IPL so how was that IPL experience crazy experience that's for sure um again watching on tv it's sort of such a such a massive tournament obviously got such a huge following um yeah just so much bigger i guess than what we experience here in new yeah. zealand and stuff um i did probably didn't get the full experience with uh with covid so we had a little Close. bit of restrictions and stuff around that but yeah just to just to be a part of such a massive tournament you, should, yeah. you know even without the crowds and without the um the same sort of freedoms it's you certainly know how much it means to um, to the Indian people and how yeah. much pressure there is, you know, from all different angles um, yeah. around that tournament. How much they, I guess, ride or die on the results. So, um, yeah, it's just uh, again something that was I'm so fortunate to, uh, fortunate to um, have been able to experience yeah. and um, something I'll cherish for a long time. Yeah, and so playing alongside the likes of AB de Villiers, uh, Virat Kohli, Glenn Maxwell. How do the dynamics of the team work? Because when you play for your nation, you train as a team for months, but then IPL, you have a few weeks and then you play such a grand tournament. So how do the dynamics really work? Yeah, it's certainly different. Like you said, it's, um, you know, when you're playing for your country, you've got, I guess, that common bond around playing for New Zealand. Um, you spend a lot of time together, so uh, naturally you sort of are a little bit closer. Um, even through domestic cricket, you're always kind of playing these guys. So you sort of have a bit more of a relationship. Yeah. So you're going and you're trying to build something um, in the space of a week or two, really, before the tournament starts. And you're trying to sort of, I guess, build through through the tournament. But um, you, you probably rely on star power a little bit more at times yeah. than you do around um, team cohesion and and culture. But again, I think everyone, everyone. Yeah, you know, for the most part, um, has played enough cricket to understand, I guess, the dynamics yeah. of that situation. And you're all there for a common goal to try and to try and win. And um, yeah, it's not it's not too hard to get everyone on the same page. Yeah. How do you deal with the adversity of the media? Because uh, if if you do well, they can make you look like a superstar. And if things aren't going well, it even if you try to avoid it, you know it's there. Mm. So how do you deal with all the adversity of the media and just all that talk? Yeah, well, I think the the way to deal with the like negative side of it is to not buy into the hype when the good stuff's happening. Yeah. I think that's the danger is um, everyone tries to avoid it when it's um, when it's negative or when things are going wrong. Um, but often people like to sort of buy into their own hype when things are going well, right? Yeah. It's it's nice to have people say nice things about you, and that's that's the trap I think. Because if you you start buying to that sort of thing. Um, you can't you can't choose what you buy into. So if you're yeah. buying into the good stuff, you're going to buy into the negative stuff, and it's that's where I think guys get tripped up a little bit. So um, it's trying to I guess understand the perspective around the game, understanding that it's not just solely you in these good moments. There's a lot of other factors yeah. that contribute. Um, you know, coming back to I guess the process of what you do, and that your outcome isn't necessarily success or or failure it's it, it's more around what your role is what you can contribute to the team on any given day um and if that means runs and wickets great if it doesn't doesn't mean that your days your days yeah. are failures so um i just trying to have that mindset and that perspective around the game is important. No, absolutely yeah and i have to ask do you have a favorite field uh in the world or just New Zealand? in the world in the world uh lords is good lords is pretty good i've played there a couple of times now that's um just so much history um, again, I think you can. I guess you can connect to something a bit deeper than than just the game. You think of all the people that have gone through um, those change rooms and those. Um, I guess the long room onto the field and seeing all the different intricacies of that grounds um, is pretty special. But um, I always like playing at home, playing at Hagley, playing at the Basin. Probably my two favourite grounds in New Zealand. Yeah. And uh, now, what key piece, what key piece of advice do you have for budding athletes like yourself? I think it's similar. I think it's um, you're not getting too caught up in where you're at at this moment. I think if you put the work in, you're always going to go pretty close to what you want to achieve. I think it's having faith and trust in that process. I think 
again, remembering back to my time when I was at high school, it's, you know, where I was at kind of guess in the picking order, it was, I just had this blind faith in a way that if I put the work in that I would um, achieve what I wanted to in the game and um, whether that was next year or it was five years, ten years time, I just, I just trusted that if you put the work in long enough that things will kind of turn your way, so... Um, I guess you, you sort of do that and I guess that um, that enjoyment that having fun piece you don't want to sort of yeah. do something just for the sake of it so um, that enjoyment piece first and foremost always connect to why you enjoy the game or why you, why you do what you do um, and then if you put the work in things will things will turn out alright yeah. and finally how does it feel to be the Lion Award recipient for 2021 oh it's special I think it's probably again going back to where I was at during my time at school and I remember I, mean, I didn't, I didn't cross stage for any award or any achievement until my last year of high school, and um, was always sort of determined to, to try and do something. Um, I guess with my life outside of um, high school, so to I guess be recognised for um, that in some way is, is certainly pretty special. And um, I guess probably the way I've always lived my life is always looking to the next thing, to the next thing, and yeah. probably haven't, haven't reflected enough at times on, on where I'm at or where I've come from so um, to have this moment to um, I guess acknowledge that and um, and to reflect has been has been pretty special being pretty humbling and um, yeah just yeah, certainly very um, very honoured yeah well uh, that's all we have to ask you today thank you uh, very much for joining us for this interview and best of luck for your future pleasure thanks for having me